Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining our webinar tonight. I'm Cassie. I'm a communications specialist here at the fund office. Before we get started, I just want to show you how to go about asking questions during the webinar. If you are on a desktop or laptop computer, there should be a chat box to the right hand side of your screen. If you're on a mobile device, there is a little chat circle in the bottom right hand corner. You're going to click on that and then it'll bring you to the chat box. You type your question in here. And when you're done, click the X in the top left-hand corner and it'll bring you back to our webinar. All questions will be answered at the end of the webinar during our question and answer period, but you can type them into the chat box at any point during the presentation and we'll answer them at the end. If we don't get to your question tonight, it may have contained some personal information and somebody from the fund office will contact you. This whole webinar is being recorded and will be uploaded to our YouTube channel tomorrow for future viewing. With me tonight, we have an introduction from Bill Sproul, the Executive Secretary Treasurer of the Eastern Atlantic States Regional Council of Carpenters, and an intro from Pete Tanya, the Executive Fund Director. And then we'll bring on Eric Sheckler, the Pension Fund Manager, and he will go over the new Eastern Atlantic States Carpenters Pension Plan that will be in effect on January 1st of 2023. And then during the question and answer, we'll bring everybody back on, including Mandy, the Fund's Actuary, to answer all of your questions. With that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Bill to get started. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Bill Sproul. I'm the EST for the Eastern Atlantic States Regional Council of Carpenters, as well as the co-chairman for both the Philadelphia Funds and the Northeast Carpenter Funds. Tonight, we want to share some important information and news around the merger of the two funds as well as introduce some benefit changes. You may have already heard that we have been working towards this merger for some time now, and I frequently get asked questions, why would we merge the benefit funds? Well, I think it's beneficial for you to know that these consolidations are important in our ever-changing world. These consolidations bring stability to you and your funds. We get to cut back on duplicative expenses for the funds professionals, as well as provide you with a higher level of benefits. And as a bigger organization, we are able to use the combined lives and resources to provide you with more efficient benefits for you and your family. Listen to the information that the fund office is gonna share with you tonight. Please ask lots of questions. It's the only way you'll be familiar and comfortable with all this new information. I want to thank you for attending this webinar tonight and learning about the changes that are going to be occurring in January 2023. So now let me please introduce Pete Tonya, the fund's executive director, to take us out with tonight's presentation. Thanks, Bill. I'm Pete Tonya, and I'm the executive fund director of Your Benefit Funds. This webinar tonight is going to focus on your pension and annuity funds and what they're going to look like beginning January 1st of 2023, after the consolidation of the Philadelphia and Northeast Carpenter Funds. We've invited participants from both funds to listen to this presentation tonight. The reason is that the trustees have spent a lot of time with the fund staff and fund professionals bringing the two separate plans together. And beginning January 1st of 2023, as a participant in the new Eastern Atlantic States Carpenters Benefit Funds, you will be under the same benefit structure. Now this is separate from the collective bargaining agreements. They are not changing due to the merger. So you will continue to work under the various CBAs in the council's jurisdiction, but the benefits that you will accumulate will now be similar. Now you should already have seen and read some of the information that we're going to review with you tonight from the mailing that was recently sent to you. And so we hope tonight will be a reinforcement to what you have already seen. We know that we have a lot of information to share with you. Please do not be intimidated by all this new information. Our goal is to begin the process of familiarizing you to some of the new terms and concepts and what to expect in 2023. The fund will be hosting another webinar on November the 22nd on the new Eastern Atlantic States Carpenters Health Plan. And with that, we will review with you the changes and what the health plan will look like after the merger. So please make sure to register for that webinar as well. The best way to stay informed with your new benefits is through the fund's website and mobile app, where you can read about your benefits and check your hours on the member dashboard. 
along with the monthly newsletters on our social media pages, Facebook and Instagram. And there are lots of plenty of short YouTube videos in our library on the Carpenters YouTube channel. And you can access them and listen to them as much as you need on the topics that are important to you. Eric Sheckler, who is the pension fund manager, will be going through the slides tonight on the important provisions of the new pension fund and the new annuity fund. He will be reviewing some familiar pension language as well as bringing some new terminology to you, such as the variable pension plan and legacy benefits. And if you remember from previous webinars, the legacy benefits are the benefits you earned before the transition to a variable pension plan. And the detail of how a variable pension plan works and is calculated are on the website and you can review them at your leisure and watch the YouTube videos which explain how a VPP works. So thank you for joining us tonight. And now I'll turn the rest of the presentation over to Eric, and I'll see you later on in the presentation. Thank you. Thanks, Pete. Tonight we will be speaking about the Eastern Atlantic States Carpenters Pension Fund, the member's pension plan effective January 1st, 2023. Tonight's areas of discussion will be pension plan type and year, the variable pension and accrual calculation, vesting and credited service, pension plan eligibility, retirement age, and joint and survivor options. The new plan is a multi-employer defined benefit variable pension plan. The plan year will run January 1st through December 31st. As a review for our Northeast Carpenters participants and for our Philadelphia participants, a variable pension plan is a plan where annual accruals, both while working and in retirement, are subject to change according to the performance of the plan's assets. At retirement, your pension could be made up of two parts, a legacy pension plan for pre-merger accruals and a variable pension plan for post-merger accruals. And now the pension accrual calculation. For New Jersey participants, it's a little familiar. For Philadelphia participants, it will be 1% times the annual pension contributions. For example, if your contributions for the plan year 2023 total $20,000, your accrual would be $200 per month. And now some key points of the variable pension plan. As just discussed, the accrual rate is 1% times the benefit bearing contributions. These contributions are adjusted each year based on investment returns, subject to a one year lag. The hurdle rate or break even point is the investment rate set by the actuaries and trustees that the fund must reach to pay expenses. Any increase greater than 5% will result in a positive adjustment to your accrual with a limit or ceiling rate of 10.25%. Investment returns greater than 10.25% will go into a stabilization reserve. Any returns less than 5% will result in a decrease in your monthly accrual. The stabilization reserve account is a notional account that may be used to protect against the benefit decreases in years where the return is less than 5%. However, this is subject to trustee discretion. And now let's discuss how to become vested and earn credited service. New Jersey participants and new participants in the EAS pension fund must attain five years of credited service to be vested in the plan. Any participant currently vested will remain vested and any credited service will be combined. For example, if you began your career in New Jersey and have 15 years of credited service and you currently have 15 years of service in the Philadelphia plan, you will now have combined 30 years of service in the EAS plan. Any Philadelphia non-vested participants with one hour pre-merger will be grandfathered under the old three-year vesting service rule. Now we will discuss earning credit service and remaining active in the plan. If you are currently active in the plan at merger, you will remain active in the new plan. For those new to the plan or regaining eligibility, you must work 800 hours in the plan year to become active. Once active, you can earn partial credit in future plan years. Less than 200 hours will earn no credit. 200 to 399 hours will get you a quarter year credit. 400 to 599 hours will get you half a year credit. 600 to 799 hours will get you a three quarter year credit. And 800 or more hours will earn you the maximum one year of credit. Please note, ongoing 200 hours per year must be earned to remain active in the pension plan. Now, any participant 
that works less than 200 hours in a planned year will result in a break of service. To regain eligibility, the participant must work at least 800 hours to cure the break. Any non-vested participants that have a combination of five consecutive breaks will forfeit the pre-break accruals. And now, what's on everyone's mind? When can I retire? The minimum normal retirement eligibility is 65 years old and five years of credited service. Early retirement eligibility is 55 years old and 10 years of credited service. However, if you have less than 30 years of service, there will be an actuarial age reduction to your accrual. Current Philadelphia participants with at least one hour pre-merger are grandfathered in the early retirement rule of 85. For example, if a participant is 52 years old and has 33 years of service, they would be eligible for the early retirement. Once retired, the following forms of payment are available. For both married and unmarried participants, there are default options that are automatically selected should a selection not be made, or in the case of a married participant, where a spouse will not sign the applications. For unmarried participants, the 60 payment guaranteed straight life is the default option, with an optional 120 month guaranteed straight life payment. These options provide payment to a beneficiary if you pass away prior to receiving the full 60 or 120 payments. For married participants, the default option is the joint survivor 50% with optional choices of 60 or 120 straight life payments, 75% joint survivor, and 100% joint survivor. The joint survivor options provide payment to your spouse upon your death for their lifetime. And here are a few examples of the forms of payment at retirement. Please note all pension payments are considered taxable income, and once you retire, you cannot change this election. For both married and unmarried participants, the 60-month guaranteed payment will receive 100% of their monthly accrual. The 120-month guaranteed payments will receive 95% of their monthly accrual to account for the increase in the guaranteed period. For the straight life options, once you exceed the guaranteed period, there is no longer a benefit due to your beneficiaries. For a married participant who has the option to select a joint survivor, there is a reduction to your accrual based on your age at retirement and your spouse's age. For the 50% joint and survivor, our participant will incur a $300 reduction per month resulting in a $2,700 monthly pension. In the month following their death, their spouse will receive 50% of this amount, in this case $1,350 per month for their lifetime. For the 75% joint and survivor, the participant will incur a $550 monthly reduction, resulting in a $2,450 monthly pension. In the month following their death, their spouse will receive 75% of this figure, in this case, $1,840 per month for their lifetime. And finally, for the 100% joint and survivor, the participant will incur a $760 monthly reduction, resulting in an amount of $2,240 per month. In the month following their death, the spouse will receive the $2,240 for their lifetime. Now, if for some reason you pass away before retirement and you are active and unmarried, your beneficiary will be eligible for a lump sum benefit equal to 60 times your accrued pension benefit. If you are active and married, the benefits payable to your surviving spouse will default to the pre-merger survivor benefit rules. Now for deaths after retirement, in addition to any joint survivor options selected or payments remaining on the guaranteed straight life payment options, your beneficiaries will be eligible for a lump sum death benefit of $10,000 for anyone who's retired under a normal, early, or disabled pension. And finally, just to touch on some other pension features that had no changes or minor changes come January 1st. Under the pop-up benefit, this is no change any married retiree who retired under a normal, early, or disability pension and have selected the joint and survivor benefit. If their spouse predeceases the participant, the pension will pop up to the unreduced pension amount as if the participant selected the guaranteed 60 payment option. For pension annual statements, you can still request one copy per year. And finally, disability retirement. These rules will replace the pre-merger rules with disabilities with an onset date after January 1st, 2023. 
you will need a Social Security Disability Award, you will need 10 plus years of credited service in the plan, you will cease to be an active participant because of the disability, you are active on the onset date and during a period of 10 or more consecutive years of service, and those with less than 20 years of service, you will be subject to a 3% age reduction per year with a cap at 21%. And now that concludes our pension portion of the webinar. If you would like more information on the topic, please type your question into the Q&A box or send us your UBC and contact number to have someone from the fund office reach out to you privately. We will now continue with the Eastern Atlantic States Annuity Fund webinar. And now we will start discussing the Eastern Atlantic States Carpenters Annuity Fund, the member annuity plan effective January 1st, 2023. Topics we will discuss will be the annuity plan type and year, vesting service, example interest calculation, distribution eligibility, distribution options, and hardship withdrawals. The Eastern Atlantic States annuity plan is a multi-employer defined contribution annuity plan. The plan year will run January 1st through December 31st. Before we get into the new plan, Let's address the old Philadelphia annuity plan and the Northeast Carpenters Fund money purchase plan. Both plans will still exist and will follow the plan rules in existence prior to the merger. Vesting in the new EAS annuity plan occurs immediately after your first dollar of contribution. In a slide that is familiar for Northeast Carpenter Fund participants, below are some examples of the interest calculation going forward. Interest is calculated based on the formula at the end of the plan year as follows. Beginning balance as of January 1st, minus any payouts during the year, minus fees, which are all accounts are subject to a $10 monthly fee with a max of $120 per year, times the market rate of return. And that will give you your ending balance at December 31st. As you will see under example one, your beginning balance is $20,000. There were no payouts for the year, minus fees of $120. Interest was applied 8.6% or $1,710. The new annuity balance of $21,590. So for example number two, this time we have a beginning balance of $20,000, minus the payout of $5,000, minus the fees of $120, Applied interest of 8.6% equaling $1,280 for a new annuity of balance $16,160. And finally, for our last example, $20,000 beginning balance, $0 in payouts, $120 in fees. This time we're showing a negative 2% interest rate. In this plan, you can have a negative return, and in this case, it resulted in a $398 decrease in the balance for a new annuity balance of $19,482. Please note that anyone that's a participant in the Carpenters Benefit Fund Savings Plan, those balances will be merged into the new EAS annuity fund to be reflected as the beginning balance as of January 1st, 2023. Under the plan, below are the eligible distribution rules and options available. For eligibility for a distribution, you must either reach retirement or death, have a total and permanent disability with an award from the Social Security Administration, have a separation of service of greater than 12 months, reach age 59 and a half and be eligible for an in-service withdrawal once per year, hardship withdrawals, which will occur once per year, or a quadro, a qualified domestic relations order in regards to a divorce. And here are your distribution options based on your eligibility either a lump sum, a partial lump sum rollover with a minimum of $1,000, equal monthly installments, or if upon retirement, you can keep the balance in the fund. And now we'll dive deeper into your distribution options. For a full lump sum, you are subject to 10% federal withholding tax. If you're a retiree age 55 to 59 and a half, or Taking withdrawal for the in-service distribution over age 59 and a half, you are not subject to the 10% penalty. 
However, if you are taking a separation of service and you are under age 59 and a half, you will be subject to a 10% penalty, either withheld at time of distribution or subject to at the end of the year when you file your taxes. For a direct rollover, the money must be transferred to another qualified retirement account per IRS definition, example, traditional IRA. We require a letter of acceptance from the rollover institution and this will be a tax exempt distribution. For monthly payments, you could be subject to 20% default withholding. Balances are required to be taken in multiples of $100, and these figures can be changed twice per year, January and July. And for the partial payouts, you're allowed one time per year the partial payout in excess of $1,000. And finally, the last distribution eligibility is the hardship withdrawal. For Northeast Carpenter Fund participants, the rules are not changing. For the Philadelphia participants, the rules are similar to the old savings plan rules, except with the addition of the home improvements for catastrophic life events. We will provide payouts in excess of any available insurance for losses such as floods, fires, or hurricanes. And as for the hardship distribution rules, the payout cannot exceed the amount necessary, cannot exceed one half of the account balance, with a maximum of $50,000 withdrawal, no withdrawals in the prior 12 months, and the account balance must be at least $2,000. That now concludes the annuity portion of the webinar. We hope you found this information useful. We will now move on to the closing and recap and the question and answer session. Thank you, Eric. We hope that was informative and that we answered a lot of your questions. But before we get into the Q&A, Here's a quick recap of what we discussed tonight. The Eastern Atlantic States Carpenters Health Plan webinar will be held on November the 22nd, and you can register for it on the fund's website. Don't forget about the fund's useful resources to help you stay updated with your benefits. We discussed the Eastern Atlantic States Variable Pension Plan, and if you'd like to learn more about the VPP, please check out the fund's YouTube channel. Remember, Whatever benefits you have already vested in will carry over to the new plans. We discussed credited service, retirement age, joint and survivor options and examples of how they impact your net pension benefit, profit sharing, annuity distributions and hardship withdrawals. And if you'd like to discuss any of these topics that we went over today in a more personal manner, please do not hesitate to call the fund office. The staff is always available and willing to help. And now I'll turn it back over to Cassie and we'll get started with the question and answer period. Thank you. Okay, I hope that was informative for everybody. Just a reminder that this is being recorded and will be uploaded to our YouTube channel and you'll get that link in an email tomorrow. With that being said, I will bring on our panel and we'll start answering your questions. Thank you, Cassie. So on the panel here with me tonight, we have Mandy Notaro Stefano. She's the fund's actuary and will serve as tonight's pension expert. Hello. We also have Bill Sprawl, as you know. Bill Sprawl is the uh, co-chair of both the current Northeast and Philadelphia firms, and will be the co-chairman for the Eastern Atlantic Carpenters Benefit Funds as well. And also he's the EST of the um, <coughs> Atlantic, Eastern Atlantic States Carpenters Regional Council. Good evening, everyone. And to my left, we have Eric Sheckler, who you just heard. Um, he is the pension manager, and he'll be serving with, uh, with us this evening, uh, answering your questions. Thank Good you. Evening. Okay, first question. Are there any changes for retired members? So I'll, I'll take that quick question. Um, so as Eric stated in the, pre in the presentation, Anyone who is on a pension benefit today will not be impacted by any of the changes that we talked about today or by the merger. You'll still get the pensions that you retired with. Will the profit sharing and annuity be combined with investment strategy for the pension? I, I could take sure. that one, Pete. Uh, actually, the investment strategies for the annuity and profit sharing do vary slightly from the pension investment strategies. Uh, with the pension, 
we've been trying to achieve what's called a seven and a half percent assumption rate, which is pretty aggressive. And it's, it's something that we have to try to maintain. Otherwise, our funding status goes lower. The annuity is invested a little uh, more conservative. It's more of what you would call a 75-25 plan. Uh, and it's, it's a little more stable and it's not subject to uh, as big of downturns in, in market downturns as, as the pension could be. Anything to add? Yeah, um, pretty much it. So thank you. Is there a maximum decrease in pension accrual rate? I, I can take this. So I, I think this is, is the question is about the variable annuity plan. So the variable annuity, so any accruals after 1-1-2023 for Philadelphia or 1-1-2022 for New Jersey, they will change with market performance and there is no um, floor. So they can go down as the markets go down. But just remember that it would only be on those accruals after 2022 or 2023. So there would be no adjustment to your accruals before that date. And the amounts that they will go down in the event we have a, a bad investment year will also be up to the board of trustees and that gets determined um, i believe what third quarter of the following year maybe correct that's when yeah. we will know the, the final return yes. final returns for the previous year mm -hmm. okay can a can new jersey carpenters who have 33 years of service now retire at 52 years old so that provision is only in the current Philadelphia plan. Um, so um, the New Jersey participants would not have the ability to retire at the age of 52 for 33 years of service because it's not in their plan today. Okay. Can you please explain the credited service again? Sure, I'll take this one. So for credit service, uh, to be initially active in the plan, you need at least 800 hours during the plan year. Uh, once you're active in the plan, in following plan years, you need to maintain at least 200 years to earn partial credits towards the, the plan or for service credit. And when Eric said 200 years, what he meant oh, was 200, 200 hours. hours. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lifetime, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what if I have hours in both New Jersey and Philadelphia? Will they be combined? Yes. So um, when when the when the plans come to a uh, to a new merged plan, if you do have service in both plans that were not reciprocated, then we will consider your service combined, and we will add the years of service together. Okay. If you do not work 200 hours in one year but are vested and have enough time in to file for your pension, do you lose your pension? Uh, no, you would, as long as you are invested in the pension plan, you will keep your pension benefits at normal retirement age. Okay. If you are currently retired and receiving a pension, I'm retired at 65. Do those changes affect me in regards to spousal payouts if I should die? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Yeah, there's, if you, once you're retired, your pension benefits will remain as as you selected at retirement. Okay. Can you still take a loan out from the annuity? For uh, New Jersey participants that have pre-2009 hours in the money purchase plan, yes, you would still be able to take a loan out. Okay, Once and this- all, all others, there's, there's no loan provision after 2009, but they do have the hardship provisions. Okay, so that is the next question. It says, can I still take hardship withdrawals? Yes. Okay. All right, so then just to elaborate, with the Philadelphia um, participants joining the new annuity fund with their savings plan contributions, that will be your new balance or your beginning balance, and you'll, you'll be able to take your hardship distributions out on that beginning balance and any future contributions into the annuity plan. Okay, so I think you might have just answered this question, but it says, what will happen to my savings plan employer contributions? Okay, so that's a great question. <clears throat> Those contributions are coming in from the savings plan and will be uh, combined 
or brought into the new Eastern Atlantic States annuity fund, and that will be your beginning balance. And so all the provisions that Eric described in the annuity section of the presentation will then adhere to, to those balances. Okay. What happens to your pension if you switch jobs prior to retirement, if you're vested with about 20 years of service? If you're vested with 20 years of service, your pension will be here when you uh, do decide to retire. Once you invest it, you do not lose those benefits. But Eric, maybe to add to that question, just to clarify, uh, that would be at eligibility for retirement, right? Which would be 62 years of age mm -hmm. because that individual would not qualify for the 55 early retirement, correct? Correct. He, he, well, he could go at 55, but then he would be subject to uh, uh, a reduction for age. Uh, but normal retirement age, you would have typically have to wait until age 65. 65. Thank you. Um, okay, so that brings up this next question because you mentioned reduction. It says, if I'm 55 with 22 years of service and want to retire at 55, how much of a reduction would I take? If you are eligible mm -hmm. or if you are active at time of retirement, uh, it's 3% per year between the age you retire and 62. So if you retired at 55, it would be a 21% reduction. Okay, thank you, Eric. Am I required to have taxes taken out of a hardship distribution? Uh, you're not, it's, it's mandatory taxes. However, you can defer that until tax time. You will be receive a form 1099 at the end of the year. Can we roll the annuity slash profit sharing balances over to a rollover IRA? Uh, good question. Yes, uh, you can, as long as the other IRA is a qualified plan, you can roll over those balances. But that's post-retirement. Post-retirement. Yeah, active, active members would not be able to do that. Okay. Currently have profit sharing account and money purchase account. Do they both carry over independently or are they merged? So the balances of both those accounts, both money purchase and profit sharing, will come over into the new into the new annuity fund. Will we be able to look at our pension balance on the computer? Absolutely. Probably not not in January, but very shortly after that. If you leave the annuity fund upon death of retiree and spouse, does balance go to an estate? So if you leave the annuity fund upon death of retiree and spouse, does the balance go to an estate? Yes, if, if there's no beneficiary listed on, on record, it would just, the payment would go to the estate for administration. If you have 30 years vested already in the pension, will the monthly payout still be subject to the variable plan? Yes, so I can take that. So it's the, the accruals up to the date of change. So for Philadelphia, any accruals up through December 31st, 2022, they would be um, stable during retirement and would not change. So if you have 30 years in, those 30 years would be a stable pension. Any accruals after that date and accruals 1 1 20, 23 or beyond for Philadelphia, they would change with investment experience. And what about the New Jersey placement for me? So, and for New Jersey, same thing except they're one year ahead. So, that would be any accruals after 1 1 20, 22. So, if you had 28 years before that, then you would have two years subject to accruals, either changes as you go forward. I turn 61 next year with 24 years of service. Will I get 100% of my pension? If you're active, then you hit the roll of 85, right? 61 and 24. Yeah. So yes, you would be yeah. eligible for an unreduced pension if you came in direct from service as an active participant. Awesome. Can you explain the 60 and 120 pension payments in more detail? Well, the Guaranteed 60 payments is just that. You're guaranteed a minimum of 60 uh, pension payments from the date you retire. Uh, if you were to unfortunately pass away 
say midway through at 25, those 35 payments will go to your um, beneficiary or spouse if you're married. Uh, the same with the guaranteed 120, except it's spread out over the longer period. So if you don't live to receive the 120 payments, your beneficiary on record would receive the remaining payments. And I would just add to that too, Eric, that the 120 option, you receive a little bit less in your monthly pension than if you elect the 60 payment option, because of that, the value of that insurance is going to be paid for that additional 60 months. So that becomes a choice for you at retirement. If you would like the guarantee, whether to choose the 60 payment or the 120. As well as a survivor provision as well, that, uh, you know, retirees have to make that decision as well, whether or not, uh, if they were to pass away and they want their spouse to receive 50 or 75 or 100% of the value of their monthly pension, correct? Yep, correct. Yep. Okay, that um, brings in our next question. And he asked, can we still choose um, not to have any spouse survivor benefits upon retirement? Yes, but I think your spouse might be a little upset. <laughs> <laughs> So if you are married, you do need a spousal consent to opt out of joint survivor benefits. Okay, this says, will my retirement payment change? Uh, for accruals prior to the merger date, uh, no. Uh, any, any accruals that are earned under the variable pension plan, they will be subject to change. And if, if I may add to what Eric just mentioned, um, hypothetically, let's say we have a bad year and the trustees have to decide to uh, lower the accrual by six, eight or 10% from what it was going to be. Uh, we do have the ability as trustees, once we build up, uh, I'm sure everybody heard about what's called the stabilization reserve. Uh, once we get a few years into a variable plan, and we have an established stabilization reserve, chances are there's going to be, you know, several million dollars or, or maybe, you know, double digits, 10, 20, 30 million dollars could accrue in that stabilization reserve. And that money can be used to offset lowering uh, monthly pension benefits for retirees. And that's, that's something that uh, when we started doing these variable annuity pension plans, we've done one in West Virginia now, we've done one in the Mid-Atlantic, we've done one in New Jersey, and now Philadelphia is gonna come into one. The intent of the trustees on all the boards that I chair is that we get to a point where we can utilize that stabilization reserve to make decisions to protect the retirees and offset any fluctuations. So that's our goal. Can I earn more than one pension credit in a plan year? I'll take this one. Uh, unfortunately, no, you, you, the max you can earn is one year of service credit. But, you know, perhaps maybe uh, that question was about the accruals too, Eric. So one positive change uh, for the Philadelphia participants and the Jersey participants already had this in place is that the multiplier of 1% for the pension accruals is now going to be based on every dollar contributed and not based on a credit formula that the former Philadelphia plan was under. Perhaps, uh, what was it, a thousand hours per credit, right? So in other words, uh, any individuals that are working as foremen, general foremen, superintendents, or uh, regular journey persons or apprentices, uh, working uh, lots of overtime hours throughout the course of certain parts of the year, you're going to accrue more dollars in your pension based on how much you're earning rather than it be limited to uh, one credit of $90 per thousand hours, which was the former Philadelphia formula. So that's, that's actually going to help uh, the Philadelphia participants accrue higher pensions and, and bigger accruals than they've seen in the past. Okay, thank you. Next question says, can I roll my legacy pension plan into the VPP? Okay. Yeah, so they're, they're gonna be maintained as two separate items. The legacy plan will have its own set of rules that that, the, that part of your pension will not change in retirement. The VPP will change and there's no options for participants <clears throat> to move their accruals from one to the other. It's predetermined. And if I can just add to what Mandy just stated, um, 
our goal is to get the legacy pension plans 100% funded. And that's, that's been the issue all along. If you recall the 2008, 2009 crash, both of these funds ended up down in, I believe the red zone, right? Or, or maybe Philly was yellow. I know Jersey Philly went into, yellow. into the red. So you're talking funds that are over 90% funded going down into the low 60s or perhaps the, uh, the low 70s in, in the Philadelphia situation. Uh, so our goal is to get the legacy pensions 100% funded and stabilized, and, and we're projected to do so in a few years if we don't have many more years like 2022, which we're experiencing now. But the beauty of the variable annuity pension plan is that moving forward, all the new years will not have any unfunded liability unless we have some kind of catastrophic economic event, which nobody even wants to think about. But that would be the only way I could see a variable plan being affected uh, as far as having unfunded liability. So once we get to a point where we're fully funded, the variable plan is doing well, then the trustees will be able to take a look at the accrual multipliers and perhaps even raise the accruals higher than they are now. Are percentages for the different kinds of payment choices going to remain the same? Uh, I can take that. So, that, so for, for retirement, you're, it's, it's really good to contact the fund office to find out about your specific circumstances because the reductions are based on your age and the age of your spouse when you come into retire. So it will be different if, um, if, if you, if, you know, if you come in at age 60 versus age 55 and you have a spouse that's five years older or five years younger, your, every person will get their own set of factors. And to just add to that, to clarify, the examples that Eric went through on the presentation were examples. So what he was really just trying to show you there was that if you choose one of the different options, that there's a reduction and in some cases a larger reduction because you're actually uh, providing a little higher level of insurance for your surviving spouse. Okay. Um, this question I can't bring up on the screen for some reason, but it says, I have heard that if I wait until 65 to retire, my spouse will receive survivor benefits without a reduction in monthly payout equal to the 60 payment plan. Correct. As long as you were active after age 62 in the plan, and you wait until retire until age 65. Uh, the default option is, if you're married, is the 100% joint survivor unreduced. So you would receive the, what would be the 100% the, the accrual uh, for both you and your surviving spouse. For lifetime. For lifetime. Okay. Next question says, if I had one, one year with zero hours, and then the next year I have 750 hours, can I purchase the 50 hours out of my pocket to get to the 800 hours? Unfortunately, no, you can't buy, you can't buy your own hours to get to the, the 800. Okay. Um, this question says, would the spouse be subject to the VPP strategy? Yes. Uh, if the if the accruals were earned under the variable pension plan, uh, the spouse's surviving benefit would also be subject to the, the variable increase on a yearly basis. Okay. Are we limited on how long we can receive pension payments once we retire, or do we get our pension till death? Uh, you, those the benefits are payable for your lifetime, so they will go until you, you pass away. Yes. And they could go beyond your death if you have a survivorship or you pick a certain period as well. Okay. Do these changes affect my New Jersey money purchase account? No, they, they have no effect on the money purchase account. If you have the accruals prior to 2009 and you have a balance in the money purchase plan, those rules still stay uh, frozen as a legacy plan. Okay. Um, this says pension payments stop after the 60 or the 120 payments. Well, they only would stop if that's the form of payment that you elect and you die before the period expired. So if you elect the 60 payment certain, but you live for 20 years or 25 years, it will continue for your life. It continues for your lifetime or 60 payments, whichever is more. 
Next question says, can I roll my legacy account balance into the new EAS annuity fund? No, so the, for the Philadelphia plan, the legacy annuity <laughs> is part of the pension plan. And unfortunately that cannot get rolled over into the new annuity fund. Your savings plan balance is what's going to be transferred into it, but your annuity uh, that's part of your pension and you get a separate statement for that every year, that will remain uh, managed as it has been. No new contributions will be going into that plan. Your new annuity contributions, along with the saving contributions, they will be combined and they will go into the new annuity, uh, the new in Eastern Atlantic annuity fund. And, and Pete, the interest on those accounts is going to stay the same with the formula that you use with the 30 year treasury, correct? correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So your legacy annuity fund will continue to earn interest at the 30 year treasury rate. Can I receive more than one year vested service if I work over 800 hours in one year? No, uh, you don't earn more than one year service. However, you will get the benefit of the additional accruals on, on the hours above that. But you do know your, your max is one year of service credit. Can I retire with 30 years of service at the age of 55? Yes. As long as you have 30 years of service and age 55, you will, you will be eligible for an unreduced pension. Okay. What about the Newport account? Uh, the Newport account is closing and those balances will be transferred into the new Eastern Atlantic States annuity fund. Okay. Does any of the pension changes affect anyone that is collecting a pension already? Absolutely not. No, so anyone who's in pension status already collecting a pension, your pensions will remain the same um, unless you go back to work and then accrue new uh, contributions. But uh, anyone who's retired already uh, will continue to get their pension as it is today. What happens if you elect the 60 or 120 pension payment? It ends at five or 10 years and there is nothing more paid out and nothing for the spouse. So I, I'm assuming the question is if if you reach the age of or you've been in the pension plan for five years or getting the pension benefit for five years or 10 years, if you pass away at any of those uh, milestones, there is no survivor benefit for your spouse or beneficiary. Okay. However, I just wanted to add one thing. However, if you did retire under a normal <laughs> earlier disability pension, you would be eligible for the $10,000 lump sum benefit. Okay, well, it looks like that is all the questions we have tonight. Again, if we didn't get to your question, it may have contained some personal information and somebody from the fund office will contact you about it tomorrow. Thanks everyone for joining tonight. Thank you panelists and another reminder that this will be on our YouTube channel for future viewing. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Good night. Good night, everyone. Bye. -bye.